Hi, welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel. We're here in Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. And I, this segment, I'm going to be talking with more of my neighbors from down the street. We're talking with Ride Connection, representing Ride Connection. We have Lydia Garth, or Lydia Garth, Leslie Garth, who is the transportation coordinator, and Lydia Corin, who's a development outreach specialist. Sorry about that, ladies. <laughs> nice to have you here again, and nice to have you here, Lydia. Thank you. Your old hat here, Leslie, you've, you've been... You've been here a few times. You, you know the routine, huh? Yes, I do. You do. You yes. do. And maybe you could start out and tell us just a little bit about Ride Connection for those who haven't been lucky enough to, to catch you before. Okay. Ride Connection um, provides transportation to seniors and people with disabilities um, throughout the three counties. And I, transportation coordinator for the East County office, which is definitely right across the street, and um, been there for a little over almost nine years. And we actually provide about 3,000, almost, well, maybe now I won't say 3,000, but let's say 20, 2,300 trips per month out of the East County per office. Per month? Yes. That's a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of it is that, you know, we're predominantly um, volunteer heavy, so mm -hmm. we rely heavily on our volunteers. Yeah, and yeah, well, you couldn't do it without them, could you? I cannot. Yeah, yeah, and there's always room for more volunteers. Always, yeah. always. Yeah, and we can talk about that a little bit more. Now, Lydia, as a development outreach specialist, what, what are you doing? Is that a new position at Ride Connection? No, you know, I've been with Ride Connection for uh, about six years. Okay. And um, in my role, I'm, I'm the cheerleader, basically, for Ride Connection. That's a fun job. So it's a, it's a wonderful job, um, especially with an organization like Ride Connection. They're doing a lot of really good things. Uh -huh. um, and aside from, you know, Leslie's a piece of the puzzle. We, we provide transportation for the whole Portland metro area. So that's right. Clackamas, Multnomah, Washington counties. And we did um, 400,000 rides as a network last year. Wow. wow. So, so if people are not in East County and are watching this, because this show does air throughout the anywhere. metro area. Yeah, so they can volunteer anywhere if they need a ride anywhere in the, in which, is it the three counties? Yep. Yes. Okay, so tri-county area, they can call for or go to the website for more information. So what do you think is, um, what's the best thing about Ride Connection that people should know that maybe they don't know about it? What would you say? Gosh, um, well I think a lot of people who are come in contact with us know this already, but we're really customer focused and I think that's really a, a really cool thing and a lot of people say that, but Ride Connection certainly walks that walk. Well you do, you sort of tailor things to help, not only tailor things to help the customers but the volunteers as well and I think that's yes. one of the coolest things about Ride Connection is that right. somebody can volunteer, they don't have to be volunteering hours and hours and hours every week. You kind of, you work with them, am I right? Definitely. Um, you know our goal is to, you know, we want more volunteers and to drive, especially drive their own vehicles and which most I mean a lot of people don't know that you can do that yes and it's it's a wonderful gig because I always tell people I said you know majority of us are giving rise to a family member or a friend um, already maybe taking someone to grocery shopping sure. and you know wouldn't it be nice to be able to take another neighbor who might need to go grocery shopping at the same time instead of taking right. that one maybe take two and what's unique about Right Connection volunteers is that you know if you're not available um, we can work around your schedule and you know and make it easy for everyone right, you know, we, right that's our goal and you know currently we have quite a few volunteers but you know are we meeting the demand no the man is continuing to grow especially out in East County I I'm sure that is occurring elsewhere throughout the tri County. it is it's steadily growing everywhere so we're we're never able to keep up with the demand yeah. right. personally I'm really glad you're there because I know when my father got to a certain point where I didn't want him driving anymore, and he wanted to keep driving, but you know, yeah. and it was got to be a little bit scary. My mom willingly quit driving, and, and it was like, you know, thank goodness for, you know, I took her to most of her appointments, but there were organizations like Right Connection, you know, that were able to help out, because sometimes well, you get to a point where people should not be driving, right. or it's just too hard for them, you know, or they need the assistance, especially if they're disabled. Mom had Parkinson's, so that was difficult for her to, mm -hmm. you know, she couldn't easily get in and out, but you're, a lot of your, um, you have vans that are wheelchair accessible. All our all our all our ride connection vehicles are wheelchair accessible, okay. um, either the lift or they have a ramp. And then with the volunteers that do drive their own vehicles, um, and majority of them are, um, you know, sedans where mm -hmm. it's easy to get in and out. And right. occasionally we might have a few volunteers that have SUVs, um, but I try to you know I tailor make 
pick their riders so that they're able to get in and out. Right, right. Um, so, you know, we, we try to work with, you know, both the riders and um, the volunteers. Right. So if, if somebody has uh, their own vehicle, say, and they have some time and they would like to be able to give somebody a ride and help out that way, what about the cost to them? Uh, I mean, you know, because that's going it, to, it's going to take their time, but it's going to cost them some gas and that kind of thing. Are you able to help out at all with that? Absolutely. You know, um, we are able to provide um, reimbursement for um, mileage reimbursement and, uh, and which you know, it's, it helps, yeah. you know. It's not going to take care of everything, but it's Not everything, help. but it helps. Yeah. And, and, and I think that as a volunteer, you're giving from the heart. And, and I, we, I realize that gas prices are steadily going up. <laughs> and they keep saying yes, it's going yeah. down everywhere yeah. but Oregon. But mm -hmm. um, so yeah. by the fuel <laughs> reimbursement, it does help. I think it's currently at point fifty six cents per mile. Okay. And, um, and getting approved to become a volunteer driver is pretty simple. You know, we... Of course, we do a criminal background check and a DMV check. Right. And so then if you're I, a good driver, good you have driver, a good clean record. And I, I check out the vehicle and make sure that it's a safe vehicle. Mm. And Thank you. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, they, I think we want to make sure that the vehicles are yeah. safe. And um, and then we're all required as drivers to take a couple of classes, which are you know they're important classes. You know, one is a defensive course, and during these times, you know. You have to be a defensive driver out there, yeah. and it's good for everyone anyway yeah. um, to be. It's a good a refresher course. I'll say that oh, much. Sure. Yeah. I, I sure. took it thinking that maybe I wouldn't learn anything new, and I'm I was surprised. wrong. I was wrong. It's a very good class. No, yeah. and, and I think you learn as you learn something new yeah. all the time, and I think that's good. And then one of the other classes is teaching our, our drivers to be sensitive to people with disabilities. Uh, and no, that's so important. that and, is and very probably important. Probably things that maybe you would never think about. Right. Mm -hmm. And it kind of takes the fear factor away from, from if you're if you're wondering if how it's going to be transporting someone with a disability. I think that sometimes people are worried about having a passenger that has needs that they aren't aware of, and right. so it really does help familiarize. We do part of that class is really cool. We do we do like a um, he, like we kind of see what it's like to have poor hearing or limited vision. We've it's got these like goggles that we kind can. Of thing, sort of yeah, or? you know, and, and we even have, uh, there's a portion of that class where you wear a blindfold and someone escorts you around our office, you know, ah. and we, you, you learn tools for helping. How to, how to deal with yes, that. Yes, exactly, yeah, and they're do, very do, useful. Do I, do I take their hand? Do I take their elbow? Yes, do I, those, exactly yeah. those yeah, yeah, things. Yeah, exactly, because, yeah. you know, you don't know sometimes, yeah. and people require, different people require different right. methods of um, transporting. What are some of the biggest um, challenges to, to dealing with people with disabilities when you're when you're driving as a volunteer? You know, I don't really see any challenges there. I mean, because you know, realistically, they're they're people, yeah. Um, yeah. and they need transportation. So there's no real challenge. You're able to um, deal with, it with just what the classes right. You offer. The classes um, it teaches teach you well enough to mm -hmm. deal with anyone at, at yeah, and any level. Not just level. learning about specific disabilities, but one of the things that th that class teaches you is how to how to offer your help and how to ask mm. what someone needs. And I think that's something that you just take any, any, yeah, any job, well, any, right. you know, any part of your life, really. Yeah. Right. And so it takes away some of that fear factor, uh -huh. but it also just allows them to kind of handle any situation, really. I, like and that. Yeah. I agree with Leslie. I haven't heard any any negative comments about um, you know the the challenges that people face. Right. I think it's more rewarding than anything else. Right, I imagine so. What about um, the personality of the people that you hire, the volunteers? Do you is that come into play when you're actually hiring somebody? I mean, you, you are basically hiring them as a volunteer, right? right? I mean, you yeah, and, and I, you know, I, it's funny. I don't even I I, I, I take a different approach. I, I don't say it's hiring. I, I call it. I invite volunteers to have coffee with me and just kind of get to know them. Uh -huh. um, it, you know, try to figure out, you know, do they really want to volunteer, what their needs are when they want to volunteer, what they're trying to get out of it. Then I tell them, hey, we can use you. This is the capacity that we need you for. Um, and try to see if we can have a win-win. It's not a, you know, we're hiring each other. Okay, that, I mean, that's a good it, way of looking at it. It's, I like you know, that. It's, it's kind of like a marriage, you yeah. know. It's, you know, we're, we're in it together, and the goal is to transport as many people as possible. So that's... That's how the approach that I, I go. And if for some reason it doesn't work out, it's an amicable divorce. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And you know, and have I, you know, it's it is. Yeah. And and usually people get uh, they get it. You yeah. know, they yeah. realize that, 
you know, most people don't think about transportation as really a need, but think, of, and I tell people, think about you not having transportation. Oh my goodness, yes. And you don't just transport just to appointments or to um, the grocery store. You can, you can take uh, people, people for pretty much anything. Anywhere, you know, my, our goal is, and, and hopefully I'm echoing this correctly, is to get people out in the community. We want to get our seniors and our people with disabilities out in the community. If it's just going across the street and taking a line dance class, it's just interesting to go over there and see, <laughs> see seniors out there um, line dancing. Yeah. And, um, or just going over to have a hot meal, uh -huh. you know, or seeing a spouse and hospice care. You know, yeah. I or um, visiting a friend who's, yes. who's ill and can't right. get out. If they, if they can't come to you. You can go to them. You can take them there. Right, and and their goal is just to get people out. We want we want it's it's important because I can't imagine being locked in in my own home Housebound. day out mm -hmm. day in and day out. So we want people to get out. We want you to mingle. We want you to be around your own peers. We, we realize you need to go grocery shopping, but in the same token, maybe you need to go have a hot meal at Meals on Wheels or right. go visit a friend. You need that social aspect. Well, that, I think that keeps people healthy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mentally mm -hmm. as well as physically, just to be able to get out and, and get, you know, be out there in the community. Because how, I think it would be very depressing to be home all the time and not be able to get out. Yes. And then if you're depressed, your health is going to go down. You know, I heard, and I probably shouldn't say this because I can't actually cite the source now. I've forgotten what it was, but I had heard that um, social isolation, the, the the health impacts of social isolation are right up there with cigarette smoking. Really? You know, I, I don't and doubt it. I, I remember reading it. that, and it was just so poignant. And because you can kind of see how yeah. that might affect your physical body. Oh, sure, mm -hmm. sure. Well, you know, if you're, if you're st it's just like stress affects you, and, the, and yeah. there's so many studies that you know back that up that stress will affect you that the same thing depression or loneliness right. and that right. sort of thing is going to do the same thing so so you're providing a great service so that's one any last things you want to share before i before i let you go well i if i'd like to encourage people to think about volunteering to become a driver um because i believe that most people especially i'm not even going to date myself but i I guess I have to. <laughs> um, even my at my age, um, you know, if I have a neighbor that needs to go to a grocery store, I take them, and that's outside of what I do mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. day to day. Because you're a good neighbor. Yes, <laughs> that that I am very yeah. good neighbor. So, um, if you know, if you're doing that already, do one more trip, help another neighbor, um, get to a grocery store, get to an appointment. Um, and that's and it's just so simple. I mean, so that's how it's a little thing. It's but it a little thing. It's, it's a huge difference. You know, yeah. I have a um, lady that volunteers maybe twice a month, and she just takes one of the neighbors in her own community grocery shopping, mm -hmm. and she helps her grocery shop, and it's a win-win for everybody. Well, and, and not only that, but the, just the socialization aspect. I imagine of the driver with the the passengers. Yeah, right. That's probably yeah. a big deal too. It is. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lydia and Leslie, for being here tonight. I won't mix up your last names this time. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And um, if you're interested in finding out more about Ride Connection, either to get a ride for yourself or a loved one, or if you are willing to volunteer and help out, it's an easy thing to do. They'll work with you, make it easy. So check it out. You can go to their website and find out all you need to know. And don't go away. We'll be right back with more of Community Hotline. <music> Valuable. Community media lets you tell your story to fit your needs. My favorite thing about community media is it's got to be the people's shows. Mm, I think my favorite one is Karaoke Oli. Oh, Karaoke Oli is yes. a good one. We sing live karaoke on TV for an hour. Hamster versus Monster. Nap time with kittens. Community media brings programming like Chambers of Commerce, The Faith Community. Psycho Chicken. Do you have any UFO shows? No, I wish we did. I, I would like one of those too. Yeah. Children's programs, high school sporting events, and of course, the ubiquitous city council meetings. 
Only when we hear from folks in their own voices with their own stories can we truly connect.